Hey everybody, I know this is long overdue, but thank you guys so much for over 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now when that happened, I went on Twitter and asked what you guys wanted, and the top favored vote was for a Q&A video. So I went through the old Ask.fm box, picked up my favorite questions, and I'm going to answer them for you right now. So let's get started, shall we? First up, what was your first ever job as a voice actor submitted by the Mighty Cow? Well, the first ever professional gig I got was Ray from Lorne and the Amazon Princess. It was an RPG game that mainly focused on strategy and a visual novel aspects, but it was actually a really fun game. And the voice work for that game was actually just the combat system noises. So like attacks, skills, getting hurt, dying, all of that fun hooey. I did do a lot of free stuff back in the day just sort of get my bearing straight and get some experience under my belt before I went on professional stuff, but I marked that as the first official thing that started the professional career for my voiceover work. Our next question is an anonymous submission. As a kid growing up, what did you want to have as a job? I actually wanted to be an archaeologist as a kid. I had a deep love for like dinosaurs and ancient Egypt and I loved watching like the videos as a kid of doing those early education lessons of what those jobs were and then the scientists and archaeologists excavating the sites with the dinosaur bones and fossils or going to the pyramids and just going through all the hieroglyphics and everything like that. It was just so cool. I still have a love for all that stuff and honestly I would love to visit those sites when I actually get a chance to explore and travel. I also remember being a kid at that time and taking like my old dinosaur figures and putting them in like giant balls of mud and then letting them dry out in the sun for a while and I would come back the next day with just like a tiny little shovel or hammer and just break my dinosaurs free out of the gross ball of dirt that it became. I'm sure if you're a believer of the multiverse theory, there's a version of me right now who probably actually ended up being an archaeologist or a paleontologist, but uh... The one in this universe got to be a voiceover actor, which is, you know, it's still a pretty good job, I love it. Our next question is, how did you meet Aphmau aka Jess from Taylor Richards? I think I've answered this one a lot on like live streams and stuff like that, but for a actual permanent based record, here we go. A lot of you guys might know the series Honey Pop. Well, Michaela Laws did her own spin-off series that's just an exclusive video series on YouTube called Hunky Pop, which, as you might guess, is a male-based version of it, where all of the female sprites have been replaced with male sprites. And so enters the male equivalent to Q, well, Q. After doing about two videos of Q in Hunky Pop, Jess actually found me through those videos because she was a fan of Honey Pop at the time and ran into those videos. So she sought me out after those videos and found me on Twitter. Then we got in contact with each other on Skype. We sat down and had a session of how she wanted Travis to sound in the series. And basically, Travis is sort of a more G-rated version of Q because as you could guess from a series like Hunky Pop, Q is a lot more R-rated. And I'm sure if you watch some of those videos now, especially the latest one towards the end, you might notice a little nod of a cap to Travis. Our next question is from Taylor Mark and VA. How did you start voice acting and what was your inspiration? Well, I was in theater when I was a, a high schooler. Unfortunately, I was very self-conscious at the time because I was 200 pounds larger than I am now, and I'm still pretty large, but that's not the point. I didn't like being on stage too much, so I was trying to find alternatives to acting without anybody actually seeing my face or stomach. A little browsing on the internet and some recommendations from my troop members, they said, hey, why don't you do voiceover acting? It's like acting, but nobody sees you. I thought, all right, I can get on board with that, and I won't lie. Stage acting and voiceover acting are two very different entities. I sincerely struggled to get my bearings right in voiceover acting, but what kept me going it was just the sheer fact that this was something I could do at my self-conscious stage where I could act and still give a memorable experience to not only myself, but the listener. So I just kept going at it until I felt a lot more comfortable. It took 10 years, but now I'm actually fully comfortable with it. And I won't lie, I've been wanting to get back into film after that too. And you've probably seen a few, a few short films that I've shared on Twitter that I've done with iScope, but 
I want to do a little bit more, but for now, voice acting has kept me going on the sheer fact that it has been the most memorable experiences of my life. So my inspiration is to keep making those memories. Our next question is another anonymous. What do you do when you're not voicing characters? Well, I mean, I audition for commercials, but I, I suppose the question is more so, what do I do when I'm not voice acting? Um, every so often, I like to draw or read a book or listen to a lot of music. I also listen to a lot of stand-up comedy because lately I've noticed when I get really stressed out, I just need a good laugh to make myself feel a lot better. So I've been listening to a lot of stand-up as of late or um, just people who share like their life stories and it's just a combo of how they deal with stress or how they cope and everything like that. If you ever get a chance, um, my favorite comedian right now is Mike Birbiglia. Uh, definitely look him up when you can. He has a special that came out a few years back called Sleepwalk With Me that not only deals with how you handle, you know, social awkwardness, it was how he was dealing with his anxiety and everything like that, and then finding out he had an issue called REM behavior disorder. And it was a special like that that made me realize it's okay to be not okay. Because, as if any of you know, REM behavior disorder isn't something you really can't cure. And sometimes anxiety isn't a thing you can cure. So you just find ways to tackle it in your life. And then over time, you actually become rather accepting of it. So, as you've seen on Twitter, I wrote every so often, it's okay to be not okay. And I just realized I'm derailing from the original question, I'm sorry. <laughs> The final question I'm going to do for the night is from Red False. Since there's always room for improvement, is there one area in particular that you're hoping to continue improving on voiceover-wise? No acting in general answers, because that's just a cop-out. You're absolutely right, Red False. I've, I've seen that question answered a lot, and that always tends to be the answer. Frankly, I would love to work on doing much older characters, because I'm pushing 30 in just a couple of years. And I still am working with characters that are roughly in their late teens to their early 20s. And it's very strange because I have a deep desire to start voicing like dad characters or characters that are eventually going to be in my natural age range. And it's, I don't know, it's something I've really wanted to improve on. Because a lot of the times when I do older characters or like much older characters, they're sort of more of the cartoony way of doing it so the wanting to do sincere characters like that it just hasn't happened but i'm sure if i give myself a lot more practice and a little more time i'll eventually get there thank you guys so much for all the questions i actually really appreciated them now if you excuse me there are other videos i really need to catch up on doing i'm months in advance due catch you all later love you